Welcome to Bridging Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 133 of ASP.NET video tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about auto event wire up in ASP.NET. This is a very common ASP.NET interview question. A lot of my YouTube subscribers has asked me this question, so I thought I would post this video to clarify. Let's understand the purpose of auto event wire up with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. I have an ASP.NET web application project here. On this web form 1.aspx, I don't have any controls. But within the code behind file, I have a few event handler methods. Page underscore load, page underscore load complete, page underscore pre-render, page underscore pre-render complete. And within each event handler method, I am calling this response.write method to write the name of the event onto the page. Okay. The important thing to notice here is that these event handler methods are not associated to the page events in any way. Let me explain what I mean. Let me drag and drop a button control onto this web form. Now, when I double click this button control, you know, we have button one underscore click event handler method generated. Now, this event handler method is associated with the click event of this button control using this on click attribute. Okay, but these page level event handler methods are not associated to their events in any way. Okay, so at this time, let's flip this webform one.aspx to HTML source mode, and I'm going to set the auto event wire up attribute. Basically, this is a Boolean attribute, meaning you can either set it to true or false only. At the moment, I have set it to true. Now, let me run this. Notice that in spite of these page level event handler methods not being associated with their events explicitly, the event handler methods are executed. So how is that possible? That's possible because when you set auto event wire up to true, the page level event handler methods are automatically wired with their events. We don't have to do that explicitly. On the other hand, let me go ahead and set this to false. And now let me run this. At this time, notice that none of the event handler methods are executed. Why is that? Because if you turn off auto event wire up, you know, attribute, then you have to explicitly associate these event handler methods with those respective events. So how am I going to do that? Okay, basically we can override the on init method. Look at this, this web form one class is inheriting from system.web.ui.page class. Within this page class, you know, the page base class, we have on init method. We can override that. So the moment I type override and then press space, I can actually see all the methods in the base class that I can override. So I'm going to override this on init method. And within this on initialization method, I'm going to hook up. So this dot load. So with the load event, look at the symbol the lightning bolt symbol, meaning that's an event. So to the load event, associate, you know, a new event handler. So basically we are using an event handler delegate here to hook up the event handler method to its event. So new event handler, and I want to associate page load event. I mean page load event handler method. So to the load event of this web form, associate this event handler method. Okay, so I'm explicitly doing that within this initialization method. Along the same lines, I can do that for page load complete, page pre-render, and page uh, pre-render complete. And just to speed things up, I have that lines already typed. So let me copy and paste them here. So it's the same thing. For load complete event, associate page underscore load complete, so on and so forth for the rest of the events and their event handlers. So let me run this now. At this time, since we have explicitly, you know, associated the event handler methods with their events, you know, the events get fired. Okay. At this time, look at this, we have explicitly associated the event handler methods. And at the same time, I'm also going to turn this to true. Okay. So now let me run this and see what's going to happen. Notice that every event handler method is executed twice. Why is that? Because the event handler methods are registered twice. So this page load event handler method is registered with the load event twice. Once in this on init method and you know the second time as we have set auto event wire up to true, they're automatically registered as well. So for every event these event handler methods are called twice. Okay, so that's the purpose of auto event wire up. So auto event wire up is a Boolean property, which when set to true, the page event handler methods are automatically wired with their respective events. 
If this property is set to false, then the event handler methods need to be explicitly associated with their respective events. And we have just seen how to do that using on init method. Okay, but there are some important points to keep in mind when using auto event wire up. So when auto event wire up is set to true, and if you want the event handlers to be wired up with their events automatically, the event handler names should follow the standard naming convention. For example, page underscore event name. So page underscore load or page underscore load complete, you know, the respective event name has to be preceded with page underscore. Otherwise, it may not work. For example, let me actually get rid of this one you know, the on init method there. And at the moment, we have, you know, auto event wire up set to true. Now, instead of page load, I'm going to set that to page underscore load one. So this is not following the standard naming convention. So obviously now if I run this, page underscore load one event handler method will not be fired, but the others will fire. Look at that load complete pre-render and pre-render complete are fired, but page underscore load is not fired because you're not following the standard naming convention. All right, auto event wire up can be set in the page directive or in web.config file. So we have seen how to set the auto event wire up within the page directive. Okay, we can also set this in web.config file so that it will be applicable for all web forms within your pay within your entire application. Okay, so how do we set it in web.config file within system.web? All you need to do is use the pages element and then set auto event wire up is equal to true or false. Okay, now if auto wire up, I mean auto event wire up is set both at the web form and at the web form web.config level, then which one will have higher precedence? Obviously, the web form setting will override the setting at the web.config level. Okay, and another thing to keep in mind, if I don't specify this attribute at all, then what is the default value? So I haven't specified any value. Let's flip to web form. Let's, you know, put it back to page underscore load. So if you don't specify it at all, by default, it will be true. So the event handlers will automatically be associated with their events and hence they will be executed automatically. All right. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.